this particular uh, uh, product and how we can design this, right? Okay, and uh, even though it is there in like one one and a half year, right? But it has outpaced various existing uh, big online grocery stores like Big Basket, Amazon Fresh, Xiaomart, uh, Gophers, etc. Right. So we need to understand, right? So why Zepto is more popular than these big brands, right? So why it is getting picked up? What is the main rationale, right? So the concept of the quick commerce are in our case, it's like a 10 minute delivery, right? That struck the chord with the customers, right? So the customers were liking it. It's like uh, uh, the, uh, the driving factor for why Zepto is getting popular, right? So we are able to get the groceries within the 10 minutes, okay, right? Uh, I think that is the reason why people are leveraging it. Of course, there are a lot of uh, backslash or you might uh, see that uh, people talk about, hey, we don't get ambulances in 10 minutes, but we're getting goods in 10 minutes, right? So uh, all those uh, negative comments are also there, but again, that's a different aspect. But our agenda was to talk about this uh, Zepto design, right? Uh, so how they were successful, right? What is this quick commerce and how the quick commerce or how they are able to deliver the groceries within 10 minutes in a uh, market like India, where we are uh, very densely uh, populated as well as we do have traffic challenges, right? How Zepto was able to meet this uh, promise, right? I think that is something we need to understand, all right? That's some of the important aspects on the business model perspective, right? Definitely it will help us to design in a better way, okay? So this is a line uh, which I heard or which I read uh, from the founder of Zepto, focus usually wins. Right. So their focus was the founder's focus was deliver the goods quickly, right? Less than 10 minutes. So they quote that average uh, time uh, in Zepto in which the goods are delivered is from 8.34 to 8.54 uh, uh, seconds, right? That's their average time uh, which they are delivering the goods, even though their SLA was less than 10 minutes, but the average time they are able to deliver the goods is 8.54 uh, seconds, right? So how it is possible in a market like India, where we have a lot of traffic conditions, a lot of traffic challenges, so how things uh, will be possible, right? So in order to adhere, in order to ad adhere that particular promise of delivering the goods within a given time frame, right? So the company has set up something called dark stores or micro warehouses in their neighborhoods. So they're where the demand is considerably high. Okay. Example, let's take an example, maybe to explain a little better, right? So let's say in Bangalore, uh, so uh, we have a uh, lot of people in places like Koramangla, right? It's a Koramangla is like a uh, uh, residential area and a lot of people stay there, a lot of uh, good neighborhoods are there around the Koramangla surroundings, right? Uh, so what uh, the Zepto has done is, right, in the Koramangla area, so they have arranged a dark store or a mini warehouses where they pile up all their stocks, okay? So in the two kilometer radius of, with, of a Koramangla area or a Kor Koromangla neighborhood. So what they have done is they have arranged a warehouse where some 2,000 to 3,000 odd uh, catalog of items are being deployed within the warehouse. Okay, got it? So a warehouse has been established, a small mini warehouse has been established, right? Now they have hired a person, which is nothing but a rider, who is familiar with that Kormangla area, right? And that person will operate only in Kormangla. He will not go to other neighborhoods. Only he will work or operate within the Kormangla, right? So, and if let's say I am staying in Kormangla and I order a good, right? 
so the goods will be delivered by the rider who is staying in kormangala and he will pick up that goods the success of goods or the respective goods from the warehouse which is deployed within the kormangala right so in short uh, the customer the dark store right or the warehouse and uh, the rider is within the 2 uh, km or within x km of radius so that uh, the rider should be able to pick up the goods and deliver to the customer right so this is one of the important concept which they have adopted kind of arranging a micro warehouses are the dark stores in the neighborhood right let's say the demand is increasing in jp nagar one more neighborhood in bangalore so what they will do is they'll immediately arrange one more a dark store within the jp nagar right so here the model they are up, uh, adopting is they are kind of taking some of the existing function halls or any uh, old buildings or any non used buildings right so they are using those buildings as a warehouse in that community so that uh, quickly they can arrange the the dark stores and uh, meet the customer uh, needs okay cool okay right uh, so so that's the okay one of the important concept uh, or in order to be successful in a quick commerce model is to arrange uh, this uh, small uh, micro warehouses within the uh, neighborhood right and one more important reason uh, it, why it is successful is uh, their operation operating procedures right as soon as you order right uh, so you let's say you are ordering uh, 10 goods in a zepto and you are ordering from a kormangla so that request will go to the kormangla's data store or the sorry dark store right and within that uh, dark store everything is automated so the 10 items will be automatically picked up right and uh, put it are packed in a small basket within or less than 1 minute right so everything has been automated within the dark store as well right i think these are the two uh, important aspects which they have implemented in order to meet the customers uh, what do you call the customers needs right hope it making sense okay so in short just to summarize right in the quick commerce model what they have done is they have created dark stores or mini uh, uh, warehouses uh, within a given neighborhood where the demand is more and also they have uh, modernized their operating procedures so that uh, uh, the packaging identifying the goods packaging is been done quickly within the warehouse okay right so what is the benefits of dark store quick shipping fast delivery right we are able to quick please ship the customer the goods to the customer fast delivery right and better sku management sku is nothing but stop keeping unit uh, so it's a it's a it's like a sku is nothing but a technical term for a product right so yeah better product management so you have a lot of range of products and uh, inventory control you can manage what is there in inventory what need to be ordered and all that things right so that's the benefit of a dark store okay i'll stop here to see if there are any questions Okay, so yeah, so just uh, uh, going to so the uh, the quick commerce, right? Which we just talked about. So quick commerce is a model uh, which we are kind of talking about. This is kind of picking up, right? So what is required in order to have quick commerce uh, kind of uh, uh, popular, right? So how to implement the quick commerce? One is setting up the local hubs, which is nothing but the dark stores, which we kind of discussed now. So in order to implement the quick commerce, the first thing is you need to implement a local hubs so that things can be delivered faster, right? And another thing is like, another important thing is have the stock ready, have the inventory ready so that uh, you can meet the customer demands and deliver the products uh, to the customer as well. Okay, right? So yeah, so this is the important business model. These are the important things you need to understand from respect to the uh, the quick commerce. Okay. 
hope uh, uh, it is clear so far. Uh, so hope you understand the business model, what is being used by Zepto, right? But now let's uh, discuss uh, our, uh, how we can uh, implement uh, the uh, Zepto business model or how we can implement the Zepto system, okay? So what is the functional requirements? What is the requirement? So let's say you are an architect or an, you are an engineer who is working on Zepto and you are asked to implement the Zepto uh, system, right? So as a first step is we'll try to understand what is the functional requirements? What is the uh, need of this product? Why are we doing this, right? What is the outcome of this product? So that's something we need to understand, right? So this is the functional requirements which we identified uh, like our, this is what we got from the business owner or the uh, business manager of this Zepto, right? So the app should allow the customers to view the available groceries and enable the, cus the customer uh, to order, if not capability, the customer to order, okay? And goods should be delivered within the 10 minutes uh, to their respect to customer's address, okay? So, and they have uh, mentioned that leverage the concept of dark warehouse or dark stores or mini stores and map the order to respect to dark warehouse or the dark store, okay? So basically here the business is asking, hey, since we are, we need to deliver within the 10 minutes, hey, leverage this quick commerce business model, which is nothing but setting up a local hubs or local dark stores, right? So this is the important functional requirement which we came to know from the business, right? So next is uh, support various payment options. Hey, you should allow the payment to, I mean the user to pay to our uh, uh, various payment options. Like you need to support card payment, UPI payment, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's also one of the functional requirement, right? And order tracking. So and they're asking uh, some kind of a order tracking. Like if I, or if you have ordered, the customers has ordered a grocery, he or she need to know where exactly uh, the order is and when the order will be delivered to him, right? Okay, so map the order to the appropriate rider, right? So hey, whenever customers kind of order some goods, right? So we need to identify the right rider and assign uh, to the right rider so that uh, uh, we adhere to our promise of delivering within the 10 uh, minutes, right? So yeah, so system should be intelligent to identify the next potential data store. What does it mean is, hey, we want to grow. So today we are only in Pormangla and JP Nagar within Bangalore, all right? And we want to expand. We might want to go to the next other neighborhoods as well, right? So system should be capable enough to identify, hey, you can you need to go to Marakali, maybe that is growing area, or you need to go to Whitefield, that's also growing the neighborhood, right? The system should have that capability to identify where the demands are, right? So that uh, we can uh, establish uh, uh, the business within that neighborhood as well. Like maybe a business in Whitefield area uh, as well, right? And uh, the business has mentioned mobile first is the, so first we want to implement on mobile, then on web and other channels, right? This is the functional requirements, uh, which has been outlined by our business team. I'll stop here to see if there are any questions. And if you have any questions, feel free to add it in the chat as well. Okay. Okay, fine. So next is let's talk on the non-functional aspects. What is the non-functional aspects, right? So we understand, right? We want to scale. What business has mentioned today, we are in Kormangla, JP Nagar. Tomorrow we want to go to Whitefield, Martali and other areas, right? which is nothing but we are scaling up. So that's what we learned, right? Scale is one of the non-functional requirement which have identified based on the discussions with the business, right? So we can scale to other neighborhoods or other cities or in other countries as well. So when we say other countries, which is nothing but we need to support global, right? For example, today we are in uh, Bangalore, right? Maybe we need to go to the other uh, small uh, uh, cities within Karnataka are small towns within Karnataka as well, right? Which means that we need to support uh, uh, the app to be in the native language like Canada, et cetera, et cetera, right? So which is like one more non-functional requirement is we should be, we should build a global application, right? So meaning it could be customizable uh, based on the language of that particular neighborhood or on a particular country as well, 
right? Next uh, important non-functional requirement which I have identified after discussing with our business owner is, hey, this application should be available 24 by seven, right? So we need to deliver, or at least we need to deliver the goods uh, throughout the day, right? So basically it means that it's need to be a highly available system, okay? And high consistency, what does it mean? It need to be consistent. Okay, right, uh, uh, right. So yeah, Vika, uh, Vikash, I'll come to you, yeah, to our, your question, right? Yeah, so it need to be consistent. What does it, the consistency mean? Yeah, um, we should be consistent in, if a person A has ordered a particular food, a particular set of items, we need to deliver those goods to customer A only, right? So consistency should be there. We need to have a, a proper tracking, right? Uh, we should not like, the customers, if A and B are ordering at the same time, right? Uh, a is ordered like, let's say, a pack of banana. B has ordered uh, a dozen of uh, apple, right? Uh, so it should not mix and match. Like A should not get uh, bananas and B should, should not get apples, right? So that, that is what the consistency means, yeah, right? Low latency. So we are time-bound application. We need to deliver within 10 minutes. So of course, the application should be quick enough, uh, right? So low latency is one more uh, important uh, non-functional requirement, of course, uh, the performance, uh, overall performance of the end-to-end -end, uh, application is also very important aspect, right? And to Vikas, uh, to your question, seems like we have two stakeholders, customer and warehouse order. Could, could be the requirements can be different from stakeholders? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, we here you're right. The actors are customers and warehouse admin, right? Uh, these are the people who are using the Zepto application, right? Uh, but uh, that's up to the system engineer or the architect to identify what uh, functionalities you are allowing for a particular uh, actor, right? We will talk about that. So I have all those details mentioned in the next uh, successive uh, slides. Uh, I'm sure your question will be answered with us, right? Of course, the requirement from the admin uh, is uh, basically manage the inventory, right? and manage the dark stores, where we need to add new dark stores, right? All those things are the requirement of uh, uh, the admin. The customer's requirement is that the customer's use case is order tracking, right? And Or cancel the order, right? Or make a payment. Those are the uh, use cases of uh, from the customer perspective. Okay, right. Okay, so... Fine, so we have a functional requirements and non-functional requirements, and uh, we need to make certain, or uh, as an organization, uh, right? So we will make certain uh, decisions or certain principles, right? We adhere to certain standards within the organization, right? What are the architectural decisions or the principles uh, which the Zepto organization is kind of using, or uh, as an architect, I have defined these uh, uh, principles, right? So I was saying that they always use APIs for communication. That's the principle or that's a decision we have made, right? So we'll not uh, interact or communicate via file or something like that, right? So we'll try to communicate via the APIs. It could be a synchronous APIs or asynchronous APIs, right? So that's one kind of a principle uh, this Zepto organization is kind of adopting, right? Whenever applicable, use asynchronous communication, right? Since this is a time-bound, uh, kind of an application. So uh, make uh, certain things asynchronous so that we can deliver uh, deliver, uh, or we can process the customer request a little faster, right? So that's one more uh, uh, principle or a decision which has been made, right? Don't confine to RDBMS. Now don't always use, not required to always use relational database. If required, you can go with NoSQL as well, right? That's what uh, it has been done, right? So build a system which is future ready, right? Maybe initially I might uh, deploy this application on my local uh, uh, bare metal servers, right? But in future, we might go to the cloud as well, right? So uh, what uh, the decision or the principle we are using is, hey, think about uh, the system which is extendable and it is a future ready. If required, it can be deployed on the cloud as well, right? So these are the certain principles or the decisions which has been made by uh, the Jepto management or the Jepto architecturality. Okay, so what we have so far, we have the functional requirements, 
we have the non functional requirements and we have architectural principles and architectural decisions okay right yeah so one of the important uh, one second sorry one second guys i will need to open the issue okay that looks like there is a question was warehouse management considered to be part of a functional requirement uh, yes uh, that's what uh, we talked about kaushik yes the warehouse is part of the functional requirement that's the reason if you see here if you you see the third item right so leverage the concept of dark warehouse right our dark stores that's the functional requirement so when we say leverage which is nothing but manage all the dark warehouse concepts and everything right so we have not gone in detail on the functional requirements but the one line statement is hey use the concept of warehouse the dark store warehouse and build all capabilities like managing the warehouses and all okay that's also a functional requirement hope i have answered uh, to your question mr kaushik Sorry, one second, guys. Am I audible? Can you guys see me? Hear me? Okay, good, good. Thank yeah. you. Sure. One second. I'm just opening my visual. It is taking some time. Anyway. fine so yeah so what we got now so we got uh, the non functional requirements right so we have identified the non functional requirements and of course right and we had a, a set of uh, functional requirements too right so we have certain functional requirements we know what is the functionality we need to build okay right and uh, we have uh, yeah so basically this is one aspect right and uh, what we have we have uh, uh, the design uh, architectural uh, decisions which has been made the architectural decisions are to be used api is always something like that right so we have decisions our decisions are there okay decisions are been identified and uh, also what we have is we have certain principles what are the principles we have we have the principles like hey it should be cloud ready and all those things has been uh, identified as well principles has been identified as well right so this is there so far we have functional requirements architectural decisions and the design principles what is important in order to uh, create our one of the important fundamental uh, for a software architecture is based on the functional requirements and based on the non functional requirements and considering the design decisions and principles we need to come up with the architectural style right so what is the style style is nothing but the structure of your application how your application is been structured right so architectural style is an important thing which we need to identify what is the architectural style the style could be hey whether it is service oriented architecture or micro service architecture or a modular architecture so that's the style or the structure of your application right so how you can identify the style so based on the functional requirements and non functional requirements you will be of course along with the decisions right and principles you need to identify or you will determine the style okay fine so we have various cheat streets the cheat sheet right various concepts on identifying which is the right architectural style right maybe in the interest of time and uh, again identifying the architectural style as out of uh, scope for today's session right but based on my initial analysis what i have decided is i will go with the event driven micro service architectural style why what is the justification or rationale for leveraging the event driven micro services as mentioned 
functional requirements, non-functional requirements, decisions and principles will determine the architectural style. If you see our functional require non-functional requirement, one of the non-functional requirement is scale. Scalability is something we need to support. So which architectural style supports scalability? I see the microservices has a good scalability support. Okay, so since the microservice has a good scalability support, that is one of the one of the reason why I am preferring the uh, microservices, right? And why it is event driven? Event driven is why it is like event driven. If you remember, one of our principle is hey, whenever required, use asynchronous communication. Event driven is nothing but processing something asynchronously. So since we have this design uh, principle, right? Uh, uh, so, and uh, this scalability requirement, right? So I have preferred to go with event driven microservice architectural style, right? So considering the scalability and extendability, extendability is nothing but, hey, we want to grow to the new markets. That is nothing but the extendability, right? Or we want to add new products into the existing uh, Zepto catalog, right? Which is nothing but evolutionary or mod modular capability, right? That's also high in uh, the microservices, right? Considering these aspects, we have finalized event driven microservice architectural style, right? And also, microservice is extremely popular these days and gained a significant uh, momentum, right? So that's the reason we are going with uh, the microservice architectural style. Uh, Subhash, uh, so can you explain what is the difference between de decision and a principle, right? This is a good question. So principle is uh, certain rules, right? These are the rules you need to follow, okay? Example, uh, uh, in an enterprise, large enterprise organizations, they have a lot of principles, a lot of rules to be implemented. Example, the one of the principle could be, could be, hey, uh, UI layer need to talk to service layer and service layer can only talk to the database layer, right? So this is the principle, meaning the UI cannot talk to the database layer directly, right? So this is a rule or this is the guidelines, right? This is one of the example of a principle, okay, right? And uh, one more example I can say is, hey, whenever you're dealing with uh, any customer confidential information like his uh, Aadhaar card or SSN number or his payment uh, information, please encrypt it. Right? That's a principle. That's a rule or a guidelines we are giving to our uh, uh, organization. But sometimes these guidelines may not be possible because of various reasons. In those scenarios, we need to get an exception. Right? But the general guidelines is to have our general principles are these are the set of rules you need to follow. What is a decision? The decision is something has been made. It is mandatory you need to follow that. Decision example, you need to use APIs, right, for all communication. One example, one of the example is if you remember in uh, uh, 2020 uh, or early 2004, five time frame, uh, the Amazon CEO has made a decision saying that all communication between the Amazon systems should be via APIs, right? If you are not following that, you will be fired, right? So that's what uh, the Amazon made a decision. So that decision has helped Amazon to grow. Maybe you can search for uh, Jeff uh, Bezos uh, uh, API mandate. Okay. Search for this, right? So if you'll see, this is the decision, architectural decision, which Amazon has made. That made them popular. If you see here, see, this is the uh, email which has been sent, sent by Jeff uh, to all their employees. All teams henceforth expose the data and functionality through services and interfaces only, right? If you are so somewhere you will be having, right? If you're not following, you'll be fired. Somewhere he is, it will be mentioned, okay? Right, yeah, so this is the decision which has been made uh, by a particular organization, okay? So because of this decision, AWS is so popular. AWS was popular because of this decision made by the CEO of uh, uh, Amazon, right? So by this decision, everyone was talking about services. So they made uh, the architectural so popular. So they were able to uh, give to the external world as well via AWS, right? So that's in a decision, right? The principles are the rules. 
decisions are, it's mandatory you need to follow it. Hope I have answered your question, uh, Subhas. Subhas right? Uh, okay, I don't understand the table on the left. Uh, what does it denote and how are we designing the stats? Okay. Nikhil, I got, I hope you got it, right? Okay, fine. Okay, cool. I think uh, now we are good, right? Uh, hope you are good, right? Okay. So again, uh, if you uh, if you want to understand uh, how these stars are being determined, so there is a good book uh, called uh, uh, Developer to Architect by uh, uh, Richard, right? Uh, so read that book. You will understand about these architectural styles and how these stars are being identified. If not, I think reach out to the Eventify partners. So I have given a session on all the architectural styles and how these stars are being identified. Okay, fine, right. So next is on the microservices. Uh, uh, yeah, so microservices, so since we are using the microservices, so the microservice is heavily inspired by something called bounded context or domain driven design, right? So it's a logical design process uh, in order to create a application, okay, right? So basically we are using this domain driven concept and then this microservice architecture has been evolved, okay, right? So what is this bounded context or domain driven design? Basically it is leveraging this decoupling style, okay? Right, so what does that mean? Right, that's an important, uh, so important concept. Right, uh, so uh, important concept called uh, bounded context. Okay, basically the microservices runs on the fundamental things is create decoupled system. Right, so you don't have a system heavily coupled, right? If you are making a coupled system, meaning a lot of dependencies, you are dependent on other guy. Uh, if the other guy don't provide it, you may not uh, do your work and all that, right? So the microservice says is create a decoupled system, okay? And microservice also suggests SRP, single responsibility principle. So each and every service need to take care of particular function responsibility only. Don't heavy load the service with a lot of business functionalities. It will not scale, right? So decoupling, SRP are the important building blocks for microservices. By using these concepts, right, we are trying to build a system, right? That's where we use this domain-driven design, right? So here, in our case, Zepto, what are the domains you can think of, right? We will talk about that. But uh, let's say, what are the domains you, can, you guys can think about? What domains are nothing but the capability, right? The capability, uh, what uh, uh, we do. Example, one of the capability I can think of is inventory management, right? So the date we have a lot of dot stores, we need to manage that, right? Inventory, inventory within the dot stores, right? Other, other capability is dot store management. This is one more entity, right? Well, this is one more capability which we can think about, right? And then we have payment management as well, right? We are supporting a lot of payment options. Payment management is one more thing, right? Order management is one more thing. Someone orders this, right? We want to track that order. We want to deliver that order. We want to accomplish that order, right? Or fulfill that order. Order management is one capability, right? Customer management or user management is one more thing, right? The user need to register, we need to capture the uh, uh, the contact information of the users or the customers, right? That is one capability, right? Rider management, who are the riders who can help in delivering the product to the uh, customer? That is one capability, right? Rider management is one capability, okay? And uh, reporting are somewhere uh, your management uh, or the Zepto management we want to know what is happening, right? Or what they want to know where the demand is, right? So that they can build a new new dart stores in that neighborhood, right? So these are the various, what do you call it? Components, domains, or capabilities. All these are synonyms, right? So these are the various components. So basically what we're doing is we are leveraging the domain-driven design, right? Or the bounded context concept in identifying the domains. 
right? So we will talk about that. We have identified all the dom domains, the capabilities here. We'll talk about that in a minute or so, right? But in short, what we are trying to convey here is, since we are leveraging microservices, we use internally the bounded context slash domain driven design uh, to identify the catalogs or the domains for our application. No, is not same as functional requirement, right? So domain driven design is identified by your architects. Who is uh, uh, identifying the functional requirements, your product owner or your business guy who is non-technical person. He don't know anything about domains, right? He's saying what is customer required. He is thinking only from the customer point of view and the business strategy point of view. He is not thinking from technical perspective, right? So he may say that, hey, I want a reporting functionality, but he may not tell you that, hey, you need to build a separate reporting database or a separate reporting component so that all the reports can be managed well. Okay, right? Does it answer uh, Subhasis? Okay. Uh, because what is logical design process? Okay, logical design process, right? So when I say logical design, hey, how we can build microservices is all about small, small services or an APIs which are working independently. That is what microservices, right? So logically, how you break uh, your functionality into small uh, components and all these components should work together or collaborate together, right? So that's the logical design aspect which we're talking here with us. Okay, logically how we are breaking into small components and logically how you are collaborating uh, or how you are making sure all these components are interacting together to accomplish a particular functionality. That's what the logical design is uh, all about. Maybe we'll talk more as well. If, if this answer was not clear, we'll talk more uh, uh, as well. Okay. What is bounded context, right? Uh, so bounded context is, see, the customer is one capability. Okay. Customer is one capability and this customer takes care of only customer registration and uh, storing the customer contact numbers. That's the uh, customer management at the customer uh, aspect, right? So I have example, okay, I have something called uh, user management. I think here I might refer as, yeah. yeah, here I have referred as user management, right? This is one capability or one domain, one bounded context. What does that bounded context mean? Hey, this guy is responsible about user only. I'm not bothered about anything else. I'm not bothered about warehouses. I'm not bothered about payment or what? I'm not bothered about anything, right? I am bounded. My context is bounded only to the user management only, right? That is what the bounded context means. Okay, cool. Uh, tech stack used in Jepto. Is it possible to share? And can we? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so Mohammed, I, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if the tech stack has been shared in the public forum, but based on their business requirement, we came up with the proposed architecture, right? So this is, we'll not say that this is exactly what Zepto is using, right? This might be how we can implement a Zepto because of some confidentiality and other aspects, they may not share the, their entire architecture in the public forum. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead, right? Let's go ahead and talk about this. Okay, so now we understood certain concepts, right? Uh, we understand uh, uh, at a high level, right? Uh, what is the functional requirement and non-functional requirements, right? So what we have, you have a customer location who wants to order some goods. Okay, let's say the customer is in Kormangla, right? And uh, what we'll do, we'll try, to, we'll try to find out what is the dark store available within the Kormangla. Right, or the dark store which is available near to the customer within two meet, two kilometers of radius. Right, if the dark store is ten kilometer far from the customer, we will not meet our requirement to deliver the good within the ten minutes. Right, if the dark store is like five kilometers away, also we may not meet the requirement of delivering within the ten minutes. Right, so if customer is ordering from Koramangala and if the if the dark store or the mini warehouse is in somewhere in Marthali we will inform the customer saying that, hey, we are not serving your area, right? So please uh, check back again or something like that, right? 
So that's what we need to do because we are not meeting. We are not. We will not be able to deliver the good to our customer within ten minutes because the warehouse somewhere is in Marthali. It is like ten fifteen kilometers from Kormangra to Marthali. Okay. So example, if the customer is ordering a good from Kormangra, right? What we'll do, we'll try to find out the dark store or mini store which is close to customer and should be within the two kilometers of radius. Okay, that's the requirement. That's what we came to know, right? Now try to find out the rider who is close to the location of the customer, right? And use some logic to map uh, this rider for that given trip. Got it? So we have two act, three actors here: rider, customer, and the dark stores. Right. So, based on what is common for all these three actors, location. If all these three actors are within the two kilometers of radius, then we need to combine together or make all these actors to work together and meet our business requirement, which is delivering the good within the ten minutes. Yeah. So basically, Ranjit, yes. So the rider should be near to the location. When we say near to the location, he should be within that two kilometers of radius, right? All all we are saying is something like this, right? So all we are saying is uh, uh, we have uh, one area. We have one uh, area. Let's say this is a two kilometer, uh, uh, two kilometer height and two kilometer width. This is square width. side is 2 kilometers okay so what we are saying here is uh, in this case uh, both all the three actors which is uh, uh, the customer the customer right and the warehouse the warehouse and the rider all are within this Two kilometers. All are staying within this small bit of uh, two two kilometer uh, square, right? If all these three are available within the two kilometers, then we will be accomplishing our requirement of delivering the good within ten minutes. Okay. So here the orange is warehouse, uh, there is purple as rider, and the green is customer. Okay. So this is what we mean. So we sh our logic should be good enough to identify these three actors within this two two kilometers of a square box. Right. If we are able to do that, we accomplished. We are able to build the Zepto application. Right. So this is a high level requirement. Is this okay? Identify the three actors: warehouse, customer, and rider within the two kilometers of radius. That's it. If you are able to identify, create a workflow so that these guys can communicate and accomplish our work activity. Okay. So this is what we are trying to design for today. If you have understand this concept, I think you are able. You should be able to design the Zepto. i am making it clear here i want to stress on this topic because it is an important concept you need to understand uh, if you are not clear i'm happy to repeat it again i'll stop here for a minute uh, to ensure everyone is clear on this particular aspect this is a foundational uh, concept if you understand clear uh, understand here i think uh, the next uh, uh, few minutes will be easy for you if not i can ha i'm happy to repeat again uh infrastructure uh, uh i mean scalability is there uh, subhasis right uh, so you need to uh, horizontally scale you need to add more servers to support more uh, risk or more uh, 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 again more load right okay next is from my question is why rider has to be nearer the customer i would go for customer plus store yeah that works ranjit as well right so basically we are saying that i am not saying that customer should be close to the i mean the rider should be close close to the customer the rider should be within that 2 km block so that we meet the uh, demand your point is right right so it should be less than 2 km so the rider or the warehouse and the customer should be within the 2 km block or 2 km grid I mean, the demographic requirement. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I'll talk about uh, how we are maintaining these blocks, right? There's a concept called grid. I'll explain that a little in a few minutes. Okay. Cool. 
Okay, so coming back. So now I think we are clear, right? Well, we are clear on how technically we can implement it, right? So now how to design it, right? How we can do that, okay? So this is a uh, map of Bangalore city, okay? Right? So what we are doing here is we are breaking the Bangalore city or if you see here, we have created a grid of each two kilometers. So this grid, area of this grid is nothing but uh, four kilometers. This side of each grid is a square grid, actually is a square, but the side of the each grid is two kilometers. So the area of this particular small square, the one, whatever you see here, that is nothing but a grid, right? The area is four kilometers, which means nothing but the side is two kilometers. So what we have divided here, what we have done is, we have broken down the Bangalore into something like this, a grid, right? We have identified, uh, uh, let's say this is Kormangla, right? This belongs to what grid? Let's say this belongs to JP Nagar, this belongs to what grid, right? Something like that is what we are doing it. So basically we have targeted a particular neighborhood or a particular city and we are leveraging the concept of grid. Is there any question? If you're not speaking, please be on mute. Okay. Fine. So basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to make small, small grids, right? So that it will help us to identify or map a rider or a warehouse or a customer in a given grid. Okay. I mean, making sense. Does it uh, logically make you uh, clear? Right. I think this is what even Google uh, is doing it. The Google Maps also follows the similar pattern. So basically, they divide the entire world into small, small grids, whatever you see here. Correct. So this is the concept we have leveraged from the Google Maps or any geofencing uh, architecture like Google Maps or Bing Maps or uh, Apple Maps or whatever it is. Almost most of the folks leverage this concept of gridding. Okay, there are a lot of uh, uh, concepts here like static grid, dynamic grid and all, right? Uh, but we may not go in detail, but here I want to share an idea here. So what we have done is we have identified the grids for all the given Bangalore area. So let's say we have identified there are maybe something around 200 grids. So Bangalore is of around, uh, the total area is like 700 kilometers odd, 751, something like that, right? So what we are doing is we are breaking down into 200 grids. Grid number one, which is Ashwantpur, right? Uh, that's one, let's say that's one grid. Grid number two is Matikeri. Grid number uh, three is let's say uh, some area, let's say Maleshwaram, something like that. Similarly, grid number one or grid number 10 is uh, let's say uh, Kormangla, like that. What we have done is we have divided the entire Bangalore into 200 grids. Okay. What process we have used? We have used this process of uh, uh, something like this, right? Like uh, have the grid of uh, uh, four kilometers radius. That's what uh, we have done. Okay, makes sense, right? Now the grids have been identified. Okay, so the method methodology, what we have done, divide the city or a neighborhood into small square segments of length of side two kilometers. Why two kilometers? Because to meet our demand of uh, uh, 10 minute delivery. Okay, each segment, Right, each segment store. Okay, each segment. I mean, the each grid. When I say segment here, right? So the segment is nothing but the grid. Right, each grid. What it does it? Do? It stores the details like longitude and latitude boundaries. Okay, what does it mean? Is this is a grid, right? Let's say this is a grid. This is one grid which we have identified. Okay, so what does it mean? Is uh, uh, how I can write it. Okay, so what does it? Maybe use, let me use the paint. Okay, so this is a small grid which we have uh, identified, right? So what does it, uh, this guy will uh, mean? This is like in a quadric system, right? Zero comma zero. And this is like uh, uh, zero comma one, right? This is one comma one. This is uh, one comma zero, right? This is what the grid is here. Basically it is the latitude and longitude. 
the, the latitude is zero, the longitude is also zero. Here, the latitude is one, longitude is zero, right? That's what we are trying to see, right? So what we are trying to do is we, are, we have identified the boundaries of this particular grid, right? So if someone says that, hey, I am in 0 0.5, come up 0 0.5, what does it mean is, hey, that particular customer is within this grid number one because this guy is somewhere here, okay? We have identified, oh, this guy belongs to which grid, okay? That's what we are trying to do here. Right. So example, the customer is in 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 and the warehouse is, let's say, uh, 0 0.75 to, let's say, 0 0.75. Right. And the rider is at, let's say, 0 0.25 to 0 0.25, which means that, hey, all these three guys are in the grid. The customer, this guy, customer 0 0.5 guy, he is in the grid number one. 0 0.75, which is the warehouse is also in the grid number one. And the rider is also in the grid number one, right? All these three guys can coordinate it together to accomplish our business need, right? That is what we're trying to do, okay? That's the concept of the grid, okay? This is what uh, uh, the uh, static grids is all about, right? So basically in our case, I am identifying all the grids for a particular neighborhood, right? And uh, based on the uh, demand, right? Uh, if, uh, example, like there is a lot of demand, let's say one in this figure, one is nothing but four mangla. There is a lot of demand. Here, I'll identify a warehouse and I'll create a warehouse, right? Let's say this two, uh, let's say this is a grid where the demand is not so great. Let's say this is Alahanka. Mostly it is occupied by the army people. So demand, demand is not so great. So maybe I'll not create any uh, data dark store here or warehouse here. Okay, that's what the, my plan is, right? So this is a concept of static grid. And also there is a concept called quad tree or a dynamic tree, okay? Uh, maybe we'll not discuss much about that, but I'll just you give you a high level glimpse, right? Let's say this is a grid, right? But lot of demand is there. If you see in this uh, uh, this particular root node, lot of demand is there, right? What we do, even though this is a four kilometer uh, area grid, but demand is very high, what we do is we break it further, something like this, okay? This is represented in the form of a tree, right? This is all dynamic uh, uh, grid mechanism. So this is called quad tree. Maybe you can take a look or read about this quad tree uh, concept uh, uh, offline, right? In the interest of time, we may, may not go in detail, but what I mean to say is that either we can use the static grid or we can use the dynamic grid logics to identify what is the grid we need to create and what is the grid we need to use for serving our customers. Okay, how the customer is onboarded on the grid. Very nice question, Nikhil. I will talk about that. Okay, fine. So far, good, right? So I think this is what we kind of talked about uh, here, right? So I hope you understand the concepts, right? Now uh, we'll go into design. We'll answer Nikhil's question as well. Okay, fine. Okay. So as mentioned, right? Uh, so we, we we are using microservices. So the microservice topology will look something similar to this, right? The microservice architecture. You will get the client request and you have an API layer, right? Which is acting as a gateway or an API uh, orchestrator or a, or a choreographer system, right? Basically, it will have the workflows. Basically, it will coordinate with service one, service two, and service three to accomplish a particular use case, right? So that is nothing but the API layer. Got it, right? So example, let's say someone says that, hey, I, uh, I registered this customer, okay? You will uh, talk to the customer management or the user management system to register that user in the system. And then you might talk to the notification system to send an email to the customer saying that you are successfully able to register. So service one is a user management system and service two is nothing but a notification system. Here, the API layer will talk to service one and service two. It has that workflow implemented. Right? So this is nothing but a high level topology of uh, uh, the microservice architectural stack. Okay? And we did mention that we will be leveraging or we will be uh, using that domain driven design to identify the small capabilities which will work independently. Okay, This is what uh, we mean here. So uh, this is what by leveraging the bounded context or domain driven design, we're able to break our functionality into multiple capabilities. What are the capabilities? user management, we need to manage a user. That is one of the use case. Rider management, we need to manage the riders who can deliver the product. 
and payment management. We need to manage all the payment options. Order management. If someone has ordered, we need to track what is happening on the order, right? When it's an order management, it includes all the aspects. All the management includes the same thing. Creation, retrieval, update, and deletion. CRUD operations will be there in each and every capability. Inventory management. Hey, what is there in the data store? What goods are we have? All right? That's the inventory management. Notification management. We need to inform the customer saying that, hey, your payment has failed. Or your order is successful. We might need to send some emails or SMS. Right? That's a notification management. Catalog management. Catalog management it is, hey, this is a beauty products. These are the list of things under beauty. These are the list of things under groceries, food or something. These are the drink, food uh, list of goods under, let's say, some kind of uh, uh, cosmetics or whatever it is. Right? That's a catalog management. Dark store management. Hey, I need to create a new dark store. Or we demand is less in this neighborhood. Let's kill this dark store. Those are the dark store management aspects. Location service. If you remember, I think Nikhil has asked the right question. Hey, how are you? How, how we know the customer location and all that, right? So we need to have something to track about that customer location and all. That's the reason we have the location service. And then we have a map service. Hey, I need to know, know the ETA. The rider, A, can go to the customer location in how much time? I need to know the ETA, right? So who will give me that ETA, right? That has been taken care of by the map service, okay? Order archives or a trip archive for auditing purpose or for various uh, for reasons. We need to archive all the uh, transactions in somewhere so that we can use it for future auditing. Analytical and reporting. I want to know how many orders has been successful, how many orders were failure, maybe where the demand is going more. Maybe we could not serve a lot of people in Alhanka because we don't have a data store. Is demand in Alhanka is increasing? If yes, maybe we need to create a data store. Right? That's the reason we are creating an analytical engine or a reporting engine, which will help our business to determine where the data stores need to be created. Because this is a functional requirement, right? If you remember, one of the requirement is the system, uh, yeah, the system should identify the next potential data store. This is the functional requirement. Because to satisfy that functional requirement, we have created this analytical or reporting engine to store uh, the request details and identify where the demand is going. Okay, uh, so this is what we have done. We have leveraged this domain driven design pattern to identify all the capabilities for our Zepto application. We'll stop here to see if there are any questions. So, was, uh, okay, there was one the demand can analyze once we get the initial setup and uh, going by the start of the business to set up warehouse and all the grids. This is a huge investment. Uh, so, yeah, Subhash, uh, I would say like uh, if you go over the Zepto portal, right? So initially they started only in uh, uh, certain areas. Example, let's go. Let's see uh, how Zepto is saying. So, okay. So Zepto is only delivering to these uh, areas. These, what, what do you call these cities only, right? Not across the India. Uh, even they have not, uh, day one, they have started only with Mumbai. Okay, and then started they started analyzing the markets and they are going to other areas. Even in Hyderabad or even in Bangalore, they are not delivering to all places in Bangalore, right? They are only delivering certain places in Bangalore. If you see here, these are the areas they are delivering in Bangalore, not all areas in Bangalore, right? Let's say based on the demand, based on the uh, demand, they might include or add more areas here. So initially, as a pilot, they might be starting on certain uh, uh, neighborhoods where you think uh, demand is high. Example, they might start with Brookfield and then grow to the other areas. Okay, this is how Zepto has adopted, right? That, that's how the Zepto model has been implemented. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, I hope uh, things are clear so far. We will uh, go uh, next with the design aspects. So this is the, uh, uh, the flow chart, or this is how the customer uh, aspects which we think about. Let's say there is a Zepto app which is installed on your local mobile or your local device, right? So first, first step, what you'll do, you'll, you will search the catalog. Yeah, I want to purchase, uh, let's say, a bread and uh, jam, right? You will search here. Search for, this is the first step you'll do, right? So uh, let's, once you have identified, and also, of course, when before uh, step number one, which is nothing but you will log into the Zepto, right? When you log in, your location is being tracked. You will, we will, via the mobile uh, functionality, we are able to identify what is your 
current location where you stay right and also we will understand what is your preference of communication via email or via sms or via whatsapp or whatever it is right those are taken care in the background that is step number 0 step number 1 now you logged in you are searching for a, a product right as soon as you search a product what you will do you will place an order basically it is nothing but create the order okay so order is been created right so now uh, these are the three uh, next uh, steps which are been invoked process order right uh, one second guys uh, uh, one second i need to take a call one second sorry for that guys sorry uh, i got a important call sorry for that okay uh, yeah so we are in the step number 3 right so once the order is been placed the order is been created we need to process so what is that uh, basically all these uh, uh, steps need to be happened concurrently so the first is the process order what we do is we notify uh, the customer that order is been placed right and we apply the payment we ask the customer to uh, make a payment right so that's the uh, sub process within the process order and then what we do in the background we identify what is the nearby data the dark store right and we decrement increment uh, decrement uh, the inventory let's say we remove one uh, bread item and one jam item from the dark store right so that uh, uh, we know what is available in that uh, dark store inventory okay this is the steps we are taking in the process order so next is fulfilling the order okay pick and package right we talked about an important concept uh, uh, in the zepto right which is uh, uh, what they are doing is uh, if you remember zepto was form famous because of their exceptional standard operating system within the dark store they'll pack uh, all those goods in less than uh, 60 seconds and uh, make it available for rider to pick it up right that is an automated process so that is nothing but the fulfillment maybe we will invoke Uh, some uh, system or some process where uh, uh, the bread and jam will be packed together and make it available for the rider to pick it up right that's nothing but pick and pack right everything is automated here okay so the fulfilling fulfillment as a part of the fulfillment as, uh, system somewhere we call this guy or invoke this guy so that he or she, that uh, system packs uh, the items for you and make it available for the rider so next step is uh, we will allocate the rider rider hey rider red the order is ready please uh, uh, pick it up and give it to the customer right so an order or store stocks if required so once the rider has picked it up we'll order okay a, a one bread and jam is been removed from the inventory so we need to maintain the right stock right so we might order uh, let's say someone let's say some uh, uh, wholesale shop saying that hey give me some uh, one bread and one uh, jam uh, uh, tomorrow right uh, so this is nothing this is the list of steps which has been taken care in step number 4 next is the ship order now we need to ship the order to the customer so we are emailing uh, uh, a customer saying that hey your order has been ready your rider has been allocated this is the rider and this is where you can track right and finally ship the order to the customer 
basically the rider goes to the customer location and uh, hand over the parcel to him right and the last step is notify email a customer saying that hey you have successfully completed your order thank you for uh, working or uh, thank you for using the zip this is the high level of uh, steps which has been involved uh, in our uh, process so far good right so this is the zip to okay right so now let's uh, talk on the system uh, design level uh, at a high level okay fine okay right so first use case is uh, the first one of the actor uh, for us is the customer or the user okay so we'll uh, talk what the user the customer the actor will do me nickel maybe your question might be answered now okay so the user the customer is using the mobile app uh, to access our application right so all uh, uh, our these are the various components which we are using it right all are behind the load balancer because we need to support a uh, lot of uh, uh, instances to support the scalability so everything is behind the load balancer right we talked about api gateway as well the api layer right who takes care of certain concepts like authentication authorization and also do the uh, routing of the calls to the right uh, uh, domain makes sense right okay so next is the user management okay let's say i am the customer so i am the customer right so i am registering uh, as a uh, in the system right what happens as soon as the customer logs into this zepto he or she will register so that's nothing but creating the user in our system that's where uh, from the api gateway we'll call the user management right uh, api okay so basically we are creating a brand new customer in our database right so before creating that customer we need to check if the customer already exists or not that's where we call the read api to check hey is this customer available if the customer is all available we'll say that hey registration is unsuccessful because you are already there in our system if customer is not there we will add that system that customer in our database right along with the customer we'll have the customer information like what is his uh, Uh, e preference uh, communication mode address all those things will be stored here okay this is one of the domain okay right uh, uh, and why we have separated read and write separately because there in microservices there is a architectural call cqrs command query responsibility segregation command query responsibility segregation right command is nothing but the write calls query is nothing but the read calls ras uh, cqrs right responsible segregation we are separating the read and write right why we are doing it if you remember in a given day number of customers who are registering might be 10 whereas number of customers who are accessing our application could be more which means that there are a lot of read calls than write calls maybe 10 customers might be adding to our system but 100 customers are using your product already existing customers are already using your product so basically there are more read calls than the write calls right for that purpose in order to scale or support more read calls what we are doing is we are separating it out into a separate instance right this way if there are more customers coming and accessing our application we can scale horizontally we can add more number of instances to support the huge read traffic okay so this is the advantage of microservice this is how microservices is providing that scalability i don't need to improve or increase the write capacity but i need to increase the read capacity here because more customers are reading from our application okay got it right so that's what we are doing here okay and if you see here if i need to increase lot of users i am just adding the uh instances of the user management okay i'm just saying that hey i need hey more i need more instances for user management right so i am just adding the instances here i'm not searching any other domains or any other capabilities so this is the advantage as well with the microservices the model driven or domain driven right and you can it is also scalable okay so that's the advantage of the microservice architecture which is scalable and it can work modular wise as well right and if you see here 
both are having as its own separate database. Asynchronously, the data between these two databases are being uh, uh, replicated. I mean, meaning uh, both are in sync. This is nothing but eventual consistency. This is what we call it, right? Eventually, the data has been consistent between uh, the read and the write. Okay, right? So this is the user management. This is on the registration aspect of user. This is one uh, use case from the user perspective, okay? Another use case is catalog management, right? So what we do, we discussed in the, the previous workflow or please previous flowchart, the user can search the catalog. He can search for a bread and jam and he can order it, okay? Right, so that's the catalog management, right? The catalog management is one more domain which supports or manages the catalog as well as it provides the search functionality against the catalog. Okay, fine, right? Fine. Okay, so now uh, we what we need uh, now the user what the customer or the user can do he can place an order. He will say that hey I want uh, bread and jam and uh, this is my uh, location. Okay, right. That is where the user will invoke or the user app will call the order management. Right. If you see here, all other calls are straightforward HTTP call, whereas here we were using a web socket. The reason is. Why we are doing a web socket here is we want to know if the user is moving uh, from today, maybe yesterday he is in Koramangla and he has ordered some food. Today he moved to JP Nagar and he's ordering the food. And now I want to know the latest information of the user location, right? It's like the web socket is like to and for communication between the server and the client, correct? So that's where I'm using the web socket. So here the location information, the longitude and the latitude of the user has been passed to the order management along with the order details, right? So now the order management uh, will uh, identify the rider based on the location and uh, uh, the latitude that has been passed to the customer, okay? And that location details are being tracked via the uh, location service as well. I mean, we'll internally call the location service or we'll inform the location service saying that this customer is in Core Mangla or some X location. Okay, so Nikhil, uh, did I answer your question? Like how you get the customer location? Basically, uh, by establishing a web socket or establishing a connection between the client and the server, we are tracking the location information of the customer and that location information is shared to our server via the web socket. Uh, okay, there are a lot of questions. I'll take the questions one by one. One second, guys. Okay. Okay. There should be domain name between other layer. Sri Prakash, I'm not sure if I understand your question. If you are there, maybe you can unmute and ask this again. Uh, maybe Sri, Sri Prakash, when you are uh, there, maybe you can uh, ask the question again. Uh, does the user management uh, one microservice or two? So here it is two because, uh, so uh, two microservices, one is on read and one is on write, right? So if the read calls are more, maybe I'll have more instances of read as well, right? This is the two microservices which we have for user management. One is read and one is write. Uh, sir, one more question, like why uh, we decided like RDBMS, uh, I think for read uh, could be no SQL could be good because we just reading. Yeah, of right? course. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you're valid, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can if you think that uh, uh, you need a more need denormalized uh, kind of a uh, thing. Uh, yes, uh, you can go with the NoSQL as well. Again, there is no clear uh, uh, each and every architecture has its own trade offs. But simplicity, I hear need to maintain a relationship for this customer what is the address for this customer what is the local the preference of uh, communication right so since we are maintaining a kind of a relationship i have gone with the rdbms because i want to maintain the relationship of the customer 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 address customer payment options customer notification right so that's the reason i went with the rdbms right since i want to maintain the relationship uh, specific to the customer or the user right but you are if you if you if you think that there are a lot of read calls your read system need to be scalable of course i'm good i think we can go with the new sql so where the data can be uh, a normalized data uh, denormalized data uh, can be pushed from the 
RDBMS to the NoSQL DB, right? Both should work, but for the simple simple okay. I'm using RDBMS here. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, yes. User management search catalog are driven by user input. So why are we breaking into two services? Should catalog management Okay, so Saptarush, if you remember, uh, the purpose of why we are breaking into the small domains is single responsibility, right? So the responsibility of the user management is just to manage the user. The responsibility of the catalog management is to manage the catalog. I don't want to mix both, right? We are then we are losing the concept of single responsibility. Or it's like coupled system, tightly coupled. If I want to add more catalogs into the system, then the user management is also getting impacted if both are combined together right so like sir, uh, my doubt was that uh, are we using user management just to add new users and like saving the metadata and fetching the user details That's and it. using the catalog for the purpose of point of view of sellers where they can add more items to the inventory and users can search is That's that right. That's right. okay Okay. Both are independent, right? That's the concept right. of uh, the microservice. Both are singly responsible, right? Each and every guy is responsible for its own functionality, right? The right. concept okay. of breaking is that. to have the single responsibility principle adopted. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, one second, guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, I lost the chat. Okay. Uh, okay, so why, see, why no SQL in catalog? Uh, so catalog, a lot of things will be there. Catalog, there is no proper ordering, right? I don't know what, when I'm designing initially, I don't know how the, what are the uh, parameters or characteristics of a catalog, right? So since the catalog is unstructured, I go, I've gone with the NoSQL. Also to support more items, right? It is more scalable if I'm using a NoSQL database, right? That's the reason I have gone with NoSQL because to support these scalable aspects and the order and the catalog is not uh, structured enough initially for me, right? So that's the reason I have used uh, the NoSQL uh, Subasis, right? Uh, socket, the web socket uh, will create a persistent connection. Yes, the connection will be live always, right? That's a, you can say it's a persistent kind of a connection, right? So where uh, just like a chat, right? Like as soon as the someone enters uh, a message, it will go to the, uh, the client immediately or it will go to the server, right? So the WebSocket is a two-way connection. Both the server can communicate as well as the client can communicate. Why server need to communicate in our cases uh, to share the details about the order to the customer. Right? That's the reason we have used WebSocket. While talking, taking the location details, do we pass any other information? Uh, I think WebSocket I have answered, I guess, uh, Ranjit. Uh, uh, so client information, I mean, as of now it is location. Uh, maybe if required more details like the user device information as well to check the fraud if the device is not hacked or something like that, right? A lot of metadata about the device can also be captured. If you want to introduce some other additional check off, check off like is the device compromised or not, okay? Generally, most of the people do, right? Yeah, it'll have a different uh, uh, URLs, uh, right? So if you are using the REST uh, web, uh, REST, web services right how it will look like is something like this right the user right something http localhost let's say user management right this is how it will be there so this is how the url will be there for read which will be using the get http get method right and this is the endpoint for write as well so here the http will be post this is for write call right creating a new customer, right? And this is the uh, read call, getting the information about the customer. Two separate endpoints. Basically the endpoint almost looks same. The HTTP methods are different. This is the get method and this is the post method. Hope I have answered your question. Uh, so, so in that case, uh, servers are different, right? I mean, uh, it span <laughs> multiple services, right? I mean, exactly, the exactly. traffic the will be- yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, we need to support our requirement is scalable. Scalability is our, requirement, right? So this guy, the read call might be running on, let's say server, this uh, IP address. I'm just giving one example, right? Or we might have two instances, okay? The read is running on this particular server as well as running on this particular server. So based on the road, 
the load balancer will route the request either to this server or to this server. Both are read calls. Whereas write might be running on this particular server. Okay. okay. So here we have two instances of read and one instance of write. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Man. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. We will go. Uh, I think I'll take the questions later. In the interest of time, we'll proceed with our design activities again. Right. So you understand from the user management perspective, these are the use cases which the user will initiate: user management, catalog management, order management. Right. As a part of the order management, the location details will be stored, uh, will be shared, as well as as a part of the order management. We will share the status, or the customer can view the status of the order. Where exactly is the order? How much time it will take uh, for the order to be completed? Like maybe two minutes remaining, three minutes remaining. All those things uh, will be uh, taken care by this order tracking system, right? Okay, uh, fine. Uh, so search catalog, right? So search catalog. If you see here, the search catalog internally calling the location service, right? What is does is hey uh, why it is calling the location services? It is it want to identify hey this person this customer is in Kormangla, okay? Uh, so I need to go to the data store specific to Kormangla and see what is the catalog or what are the offerings we have in that data I mean the dark store of Kormangla, right? So basically here we are going to the location service, okay? Saying that hey something like this, right? Uh, something uh, uh, like this, maybe something like this, we will be executing. Hey, select star from data store where latitude and longitude is in between in this, this uh, range. Okay, so this is the kind of a query we are executing it to identify the data store or the dark store. Okay, right. So uh, basically, something like this logical, this is not exactly the query, but logical query, something like this, right. We have identified the grids, we have identified the longitude and latitude of the customer. So now we are executing a query against the data store or the location service to identify hey, where are the look, where are the data stores in this location. Then we might get hey, this is the uh, Koromangla uh, 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 data store location, right? Okay, that's what we are doing here. Okay, so what we do here, so as soon as you search, you have the location of Koromangla being passed here, right? And you are identifying what are the data store, I mean the dark stores. Uh, available near to this particular location. In our case, it is Kormangla. So now, uh, whatever the catalog available or whatever the items available in the Kormangla, that will be visible to this catalog management. That's the reason this guy is internally talking to the location service. Okay. Similarly, the order management, if someone is placing an order, right, we need to find a, a, a rider, right? That's nothing but something like this, right? You need to select star from the rider where latitude and longitude is so and so. Right, something need to be done as well. The order is been placed. I need to find the order, the uh, writer, as well as I need to find the uh, data store and decrement uh, a particular item from that uh, data store as well. Right, so so that's the reason I think uh, it will talk to the find writer service internally. Okay, so this is the use case from the user management perspective. Okay, uh, these are the list of use cases which the user can do. That makes sense. Okay. So I'll go to the rider use cases, right? So now let's say I am a rider. I am getting some money uh, from, uh, of course, one more use case is there, which we did not talk is the payment management. The user can uh, talk to the payment services to pay a particular uh, 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 order for a particular order. Maybe the payment management internally, order management internally talk to the payment as well, but that's also something in scope, okay? Fine. Now the rider management, right? The rider use cases. So this is the rider. So the rider installs the rider specific app, maybe something like Zepto rider app. He will be installing it, right? Okay. So what it what it will happen is whenever he register, right? He some kind of a registration process will be done, right? Okay. This is the rider. This is the rider preference. The rider has agreed to pay or receive a payment on a monthly basis or a weekly basis, right? Or rider. Uh, preferences he want to communicate uh, via email or mobile all those things will be taken care that's a part of rider management similar to reader user management we have the rider management again read and write as well yeah. okay so now uh, along with that uh, the rider man the rider app will talk to the location service okay so example uh, so the, if the rider is in Kormangla, so for every x seconds let's say for five seconds 
one information the rider uh, from the rider app saying that hey i am in kormangala uh, let's say uh, at uh, uh, the uh, forum mall right that information will be sent to the location service what is that hey rider number 1 is in segment 1 which is kormangala uh, forum mall okay that is the information we have right what is that meaning why are sending this information to the location service we are maintaining this kind of a lookup hey rider number r1 right let me zoom a bit here so rider r1 is part of the grid or the segment s1 rider r2 is in segment s3 there is rider r3 who is also in the near the forum mall of kormangala right hence we are showing that agreement that segment here right let's say the rider moved from uh, let's say kormangala forum mall to uh, let's say the christ college okay so that happened just couple of uh, seconds back a couple of minutes back right so now that information will be sent from the rider app that information will be sent asynchronously to the location service saying that hey rider moved from kormangala to the uh, christ college right so what we will do we will update the rider r1 to segment s4 because he moved to the christ college right this is what is happening from the rider app the, uh, the communication is happening to the location service via the web socket why the web socket is required because we need to establish that client client to server communication persistent connection need to be established so that based on the movement of the rider the location will be updated in a real time basis that's the reason we are using the web socket uh, uh, here okay so the location service internally talks to the map service maybe let's say the map is nothing but we are leveraging the google maps here right so now uh, it will it will let me know what is the segment hey he is in forum mall the rider is in the forum mall what is the segment it belongs to it belongs to segment number s1 right that is information the map service might give us right map service internally have that segments right have that blocks right or the geofencing aspect will be taken care by the maps service or it might give you the eta hey uh, from rider uh, who is in the forum in the segment 1 which is near the forum mall of kormangala right uh, it might uh, take 5 minutes to go to the nearby dart store those kind of eta information also will be provided by this map service so the map service is one more capability or a component which you are building what is this map service functionality it is break in break the map into small grids and give the eta from one place to another place which will be useful for calculating the uh, rider eta or completion of a order okay so this is the use cases of rider okay of course one more use case is there which i did not mention is payment right the rider will get the payments right like end of the day or end of the month or something whatever based on the configurations he or she will get the payment as well right so that is also one more in, in interaction which will happen from rider to the rider app payment as well okay making sense i'll stop here to see if there are any questions uh okay uh kartik uh, why we have we need to track user location order should be delivered to a particular address right uh, and even if you track the user location why web socket is needed can the app uh, uh, okay got it very nice question kartik uh, so why are we tracking the user location here right uh, so uh, you are user right so and uh, you have the mobile app right so today right now you are in the uh, forum mall you, along with your friend right uh, you are having your dinner all good right now you move to your friend's uh, place right after having the dinner at uh, forum mall uh, you move to your friend's place okay so now uh, i need to know which location you move let's say you move to your friend's place who, which is in the christ college now you realize that you don't have a, uh, let's say a toothbrush just an example right so you want to order via the zepto okay so i want to know where are you because that's the reason i need the location you are in the christ college now i i am i uh, authorized i do i have a warehouse available near to christ college if yes i can deliver the toothbrush to you within 10 minutes if not i'll hands up i'll i'll say that hey we can't do service uh, in this uh, location that's the reason i need the location information okay right why web service because we need to track things we need to maintain that persistent uh, connection between the user and the server right uh, because as soon as you move 
right? From Kormangala Forum Mall to the Christ College, we want to know, hey, this area is serviceable or not? This area is serviceable or not? This area is serviceable or not? So that we can uh, get the information about the user weekly on a real-time basis and make things happen. Also, why we need a web socket? So let's say you have ordered the toothbrush, right? You We want to push you, right? Like example, when you order a Uber uh, cab, right? So you will get the information, yeah, driver is here, the driver is moving, driver will reach in five minutes, right? That is nothing but a web socket connection only again, right? Uber is informing the driver's location and the ETA to the customer via the web socket connection. The same thing we are doing here. When the order is being completed, we are saying that, hey, rider is here. Rider will come to your place in the next three minutes. Hey, rider is almost there. Rider is at your gate, right? We are providing a real-time tracking mechanism to you, Karthik. Okay, cool. Uh, I hope I have answered your question, Karthik. Hey, next is, Subha says, uh, wouldn't it be better to detect the user location, go to the art store, and show only the catalogs. Yeah, I think that is what we have taken care of. I think that's what uh, we are doing it as well, right? We are identifying the, based on the location, we are identifying the dark store and getting it, right? Uh, yeah, I think Vishnu Priya, yes, uh, I'm assuming that I in how number of idols we employ in a particular neighborhood based on the demand. Correct, yes, Vishnu Priya, yes, I think, uh, uh, they have uh, at least Zepto has uh, uh, has some requirement prerequisite says in say basic prerequisite for the rider saying that the rider should be familiar with that location he know gali gali so that he can uh, drive faster right that's a requirement and also uh, of course uh, Zepto internally uses various uh, algorithms various AI process uh, to determine which route we need to use to deliver things faster. Yes, it internally uses AI and various other composite APIs, right? And if you use a lot of WebSocket, how do you manage scale? Yeah, scaling should not be a problem with microservices. You can horizontally add more infrastructure to support your business needs, right? That's the beauty of the cloud. So based on the scale, you can add more JVMs or more instances or more VMs if required. Will the latency issue between the multiple microservices? Of course, yes, uh, uh, with a lot of microservices, there will be a little overhead specific to latency, uh, but that should not be a concerning aspect. It can be managed by, in a right way. If everything has been configured in the right way, the latency can be managed as well, right? But yes, uh, one of the downtrend or the disadvantage of microservices is since you have small, small components, all these components need to talk to each other there will be a bit more latency compared to other architecture, right? So, yeah, that's the uh, thing. Hey, okay, uh, these days system hoster. Okay, yeah, I think, uh, uh, thanks uh, Prakash for answering as well. Okay, got it, right? I think uh, we have remaining 10, 15 minutes, right? So I'll go a little uh, fast. Maybe I'll take uh, the questions in the last, okay? So we talked about the user cases. We talked about, uh, rider cases one more actor is the super admin or the admin who will manage the uh, data store or who will manage the catalogs okay so again uh, the admin also might be using some portal or some app to manage the uh, things right again it will talk to the user management basically which user is marked as admin what is his permissions what are what are his roles all those things will be configured that's the reason we are talking to the admin uh, user management Let's say a new uh, admin has been added, right? So that information will, will talk, I will be added via the user management, right? And then catalog management here, he is talking to the managed catalog. He will say that, hey, these are the catalogs we have. Hey, I'm adding a new catalog, which is beauty, right? I have added this lipstick or this shaving, this shaving lotion, whatever it is, that will be there in this catalog management as well, right? And then the admin will take care of dark, dark stock management as well. Hey, this uh, dark store is not uh, doing well. I think we don't have demand in Kormangla. Maybe let's uh, remove this dark store. That can be done by this admin as well. Or the admin will track, hey, we have a lot of demand in uh, uh, this particular area uh, called uh, Belandur, right? Let's add a new dark store. What the admin will do? Admin will talk to some function hall in the Belandur and uh, give a daily basis rent and create that dark store, right? So that uh, he will maintain uh, that uh, inventory of uh, 
uh, goods in that function hall and deliver the goods to the customers who are staying within the Belandur, right? So that's the dark store management, right? So what are the use cases that uh, admin guys is doing? User management, catalog management, and the dark store management. The dark store management internally will talk to uh, the location service as well as the inventory management as well. Inventory management is nothing but, hey, I need 100 toothbrushes in uh, uh, Belandur uh, mini store or mini data warehouses, right? It might talk to some wholesale shop or some inventory guy to order or give that 100 toothbrushes, okay? So that's the high level uh, use cases what the super admin is doing in, uh, in our case, okay? Make sense, okay? So the three actors at a high level, admin guy, rider, and the, and the user, we talked about the capabilities each and every guy is doing it, right? And we have the microservices for each and every place here, right? So let's uh, take a little, uh, uh, um, let's say the order has been placed now, okay? How it will work, right? So this kind of a uh, diagram talks about uh, that order placement or order placed scenario, okay? How it has been achieved, okay? So the customer has logged in. This is a load balancer. Why the load balancer he is coming to our application where he is searching, he or she is searching for a catalog. Or what are the list of items we have, right? So search catalog internally talks to the catalog management. Catalog management internally uh, invokes the location service. Basically, I mean, the search catalog itself is talking to the location service. Hey, this customer is in Bellandur, right? The location information has been passed to the catalog management. Catalog management, the request is, list of uh, available items by segment ID. okay? So now the catalog management uh, will talk to the dark store saying that, hey, in the segment Bellandur or segment number one, which belongs to Bellandur, what are the items you have, okay? That's what the it is happening. The catalog management is talking to the dark store management. Each and every guy is running on a separate instance, okay? Right? So uh, now the dark store management internally if required, uh, it will talk to the inventory. Hey, I have fulfilled 10 orders. 10 toothbrushes are being issued to the customers. Give me 10 more new uh, toothbrushes so that I'll maintain the right stock, right? Or the dark store says that, hey, looks like there is a lot of demand for toothbrushes. Hey, can you give me more toothbrushes, right? That's where it will do to the, in, uh, the inventory uh, management uh, system, right? Order fulfillment. Let's say the toothbrush has been ordered by this customer who is in Bellandur, right? So the dark star will say that, hey, I am giving this or I am fulfilling this toothbrush request, right? I'm removing one of, our, one of my item, right? And it will give it to the order fulfillment guy to pick and pack and deliver to the customer, okay? So this is the workflow which is happening when someone is searching uh, for a, a catalog. Okay, fine. So next is the place order. He has placed an order. The customer has saying that, hey, I need one toothbrush. The order is being placed, right? We inform the dark store saying that, hey, we got a confirmation. Please remove one item from your inventory, right? So that's the step number one. Step number two, it will go and ask the find rider system saying that, hey, uh, find a rider, rider for me who is close to this location. Right? That's where this rider, find rider guy will talk to the location service and the map service to identify what is the location, who is there in this location, which rider is there in this location, right? And uh, that rider will be allocated for this order. Okay, making sense so far? Okay, so what does that happens? The find rider, uh, this guy, we let's say the rider has been allocated. Now we are establishing a connection, WebSocket connection, uh, with the rider saying that, hey, rider, you are in this location, right? Okay, you have a request, go and pick the order from the Balandur data store and give this order to the customer ABC who has ordered from Balandur, right? This is what is happening at a high level. Am I making sense? I'll stop here to see if there are any questions. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay, cool. Subhas is the right question. If the multiple riders are there, I think if you see right one of the uh, use case we hear, so the rider 
R1 and R3 both are in segment number S1. Which rider I need to choose, right? I did not mention here, uh, but uh, it will be, if you remember, one of the use case we have is analytical system, right? I need to store all the uh, things happening uh, in this analytical database, analytical uh, database or reporting engine. Okay, so basically it'll get all the data from various systems and store it in one uh, DB. Okay, so basically uh, the riders ratings, riders uh, experience, riders uh, 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 availability, all those things will be there in this, uh, uh, report, this reporting system. Let's say if the rider rating is good. In our case, if there are two riders, rider R1 and R3. R3 rating is higher, right? Maybe we will prefer uh, to use R3, right? Because his rating is high. Or R3 has delivered to this customer previously, right? And the customer liked the R3 service, right? Maybe based on the past history, we realized that a R3 has, R3 has served this customer Right, so why not? Let's use the same same rider again. Right, so what we do basically, we go to somewhere when you are identifying the rider. Maybe this find rider will talk to the analytical engine to understand uh, the right uh, rider, or by leveraging some kind of a algorithm or a logic, we'll identify the best uh, uh, rider in this case. Okay, did I answer your question, Subhasis? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Praveen, is there any asynchronous system and how uh, does the workflow is managed to Sada? Very nice question. So a lot of uh, workflows, uh, 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 the workflow management can be done in a multiple ways. That's the reason we were using the API layer. If you go back, the topology we were using is uh, API layer, right? We mentioned about API layer. Saga pattern can be used, correct? So that's, again, Saga is not, um, it's a microservice pattern, but it is not used for workflow management, basically it is used for uh, uh, tracking the database operations, meaning whether, whether I should roll back the order or com commit the order, something like that, right? But for the workflow, we will be using various integration uh, systems or integration patterns, which is there in the market, right? So example, the API layer, one of the popular API layer we will be using uh, in microservices is uh, uh, Moolsoft AnyPoint platform. Okay, so basically this is one of the popular uh, guy which is being used to implement that workflows, right? So this is one way you can implement the workflows or let's say you don't have money to implement this uh, or buy this license of Moon. Maybe you can implement the workflows using the pipes and filters uh, uh, pattern or by leveraging any other integration pattern, you can build out workflows, as well as some people use various business uh, uh, BPM tools as well for implementing the workflows. It's all based on your architecture or based on your technical feasibility, you need to implement this particular API layer or the integration system. Even you can use a Spring integration, right? If you are a Java guy and you want to leverage uh, something like uh, 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 open source, maybe you can use a Spring integration component, which will help you to build these workflows easily. Okay, so this is how you can implement the workflow. So maybe you can uh, take a look uh, in the moons of any point, there is something called API led connectivity. So take a look at that, maybe that will give you more uh, 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 clarity on how this uh, workflows can be implemented, right? So in the API led connectivity, there are multiple flows like experience API, process API, system API, that will give you a lot of clarity as well, right? So to in short, to answer your question, uh, uh, answer your question. So how Praveen to answer your question, maybe yeah, we can use Spring integration for open source or any other uh, third party tools for implementing the workflow or you can use any orchestration, uh, uh, what do you call orchestration uh, uh, components like uh, uh, web methods or any other uh, products which is available in the market. Okay. Did I answer your question? Okay, cool. So yeah, so now I, I am assuming you got a high level understanding on how we are able to build this system Zepto, right? Which is time critical and time bounded to complete an order, right? 
for since this is a time bounded or time critical so this business model we call it as q commerce or a quick commerce where the order placed and order delivered should be completed within the 10 minutes of a time frame okay uh, i'll stop here to see if there are any uh, questions okay so if not i think this is what the high level architecture about the uh, zepto uh, uh, zepto system design right again every architecture has its trade offs right uh, so we will not say this is only the perfect architecture right but based on the given functional requirement non functional requirement and the architectural decisions and the principles we try to leverage the microservice architecture and we try to build the zepto uh, kind of an application by leveraging the event driven microservice uh, uh, paradigm okay uh, so yeah i'll stop here to see if there are any questions uh, uh, maybe i can use remaining 2 3 uh, uh, minutes uh, to take your questions so does it sounds good does it uh, does this design make sense to you guys follow up queries responsibility of architects between everything we discussed do we have okay sure i think uh, yeah this is uh, i hope you are able to see the uh, 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 see the questions from subhasis right so i would recommend the one of the good book is uh, developer to architect personally i have uh, liked it, liked a lot right so this is uh, a book right uh, written by uh, mark richards and dave right uh, these are the two guys who have uh, written this book this is the book fundamentals of uh, uh, fundamentals of a software architecture right so i would recommend uh, you to kind of uh, uh, take a look at this book uh, to understand the concepts about the system architecture right uh, this is the very nice book right and also you can look at uh, uh, this portal developer to architect right so these guys also kind of uh, uh, talk about certain things uh, uh, are certain they share certain videos as well like one hour video half hour video and all that right and also i think uh, on the uh, uh, expertify as well there are a lot of good materials around the system design maybe you can go over that right so if you go to the expertify portal itself there are a lot of uh, good materials uh, been added you can go over that as well right Uh, so what are the responsibility of an architect uh, i think uh, uh, that's a big topic so i have covered this the responsibility of an architect in the fundamentals of an architecture uh, session so that is available as well in the expertify uh, portal maybe you can go over or you can access that particular video as well okay right so in short the go to for you is expertify.com so this is the place where you can access a lot of good content which will help you to understand and learn and also you can reach out reach out to zara or anyone from expertify uh, to get uh, uh, the access to all the materials okay uh, maybe last two questions uh, how will scale the web socket based uh, microservice architecture okay so if you come back uh, so to answer your question who was that uh deepak uh, to answer your question right so if you see here right so i have uh, uh, i have the web socket handler created here right there are a lot of riders now i have just have two web socket handlers let's say i have, my demand is going i'm having hundreds of riders right so what i need to do i need to scale my web socket handlers right so this is what we do scale horizontally that's the beauty of microservices right you don't need to scale the entire system you can, you can scale just the single component to have multiple web socket handlers to support more riders right so that's the uh, that's the how we uh, kind of uh, uh, scale uh, microservices last question maybe from vaishali will you upload the meeting recording on youtube i think yeah, zara uh, will answer uh, i have answered i guess uh, uh, 
uh, yeah, Zara have an answer uh, uh, your question, uh, Vaishali. And I think there are a lot of good videos available as well on the system design. Maybe you can subscribe to Expertify. Okay, I'll stop here. Almost we are top of the hour. I'll stop here. Uh, if no other questions, I guess the last, maybe Deepak, uh, one more question. What if that socket handler crashes? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, so we have a lot of uh, retry mechanisms. We can reestablish a lot of patterns are there, right? So just like any HTTP client, uh, HTTP connection, right? What happens if HTTP connection is lost? You will retry, right? All those mechanisms will be uh, adopted, Deepak, uh, in order to reestablish the connection. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty much, uh, we talked about two hours, uh, right? I hope uh, this is, uh, this session is helpful and you're able to understand at a high level how we can design uh, the concepts or the systems like Zepto. Right? Okay. Uh, Thank you, Shara, for such an excellent uh, session and thank you everyone else for joining. Uh, I've dropped down uh, uh, the links uh, to the meetup group as well. You can just go on and join our meetup group for uh, such amazing sessions ahead. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. All the recordings are posted there. Okay. Tomorrow, we have the session for DSA on the topic heat. Uh, so do join the session. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks all. Have a nice day. Bye.